Okay, well, thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Jean-Sébastien Gauthier. I also go by JS. I think I know a couple people here from uh, being a member of the Saskatoon TechWorks word. I'm also uh, officially the most nervous person in the room, and so I already won the biggest sweat uh, rings under your shirt award this evening, in case anybody was wondering. Uh, totally beat you. I uh, found out yesterday that I was going to present, so I'm... Anyway, very pleased to be here. Thank you. Um, I'd like to uh, uh, just take a moment to acknowledge uh, that we're on Treaty 6 territory. I'd also um, just say I'm thankful to be here. So, um, my, uh, I'm, like, I'm an artist. I have my own uh, creative uh, services company where I make um, interactive videos and uh, new media work, uh, video installations. I do technical work for performance arts. So it, in essence, I'm a very specialized artist in my own work, I'm mixing uh, video, sculpture, and performance art, but also um, I work a lot with other professional artists. So I'm going to give you a quick uh, kind of um, overview and try to get my nerves to just settle here. Okay, um, so I'm showing you right now a work from 2012. This is a sculpture uh, from a piece called Phobodrome. Um, and I've collected a kind of a two minute um, video. F is there a button I'm supposed to push? Hooray, okay, just to flip through. And uh, I'll just go ahead and play this. So. Uh, no, we'll go back to that one. Hopefully, I'll actually be able to play the piece. Yeah, okay, great. So, um, and I might, I can chime in on the, on the work itself. Well, anyway, this is part of what I do uh, from 2012. It's best loud. Uh, We'll see if that works out. It's quite quiet, but... And it's uh, blocking out. Well, that was the first few seconds of some of the work. I do. <laughs> Didn't quite go... Uh, I don't know if it'll run. There's some... So that was a very, very short, uh, kind of quick, um, uh, I guess it was a short uh, segment of about a, a half hour to 35 minute piece that was presented here in 2012. And um, my interest in my performance work and in my art practice in general is to try to establish um, a, an immersive space. And so I'm using, um, I guess I should, I kind of go back to, I'm trained uh, as a sculptor. I studied animation, like classical animation prior to that. Um, and uh, my grandfather was Bill Epp, who's a local uh, sculptor who created many monuments in the city. Uh, so I grew up in these uh, environments surrounded by artists generating work of all types uh, and international uh, symposiums happening and being this kind of kid who just happened to be at the right age to take in, like, you know, when you're like 11 years old, nobody takes you seriously enough, but you can kind of sneak in and hear everything that's going on around with the artist. So I kind of got a really good kick 
uh, up uh, into working. Worked in Europe uh, in some foundries and in the States. Studied at uh, Concordia in sculpture. Uh, there's a bronze piece uh, based on some of the research for the work Phobodrome. That uh, I'm talking really fast. Uh, based on some of the research, um, uh, Phobodrome was based on uh, kind of exploring fear uh, failure and aesthetics uh, of failure, especially in the idea of, uh, like I was particularly interested in uh, images of saints who were usually very successful with what they had achieved. Uh, and uh, I kind of thought of the Phobodrome piece as sort of like St. George fail, like the, the people before, the average Joe who doesn't, you know, achieve this kind of greatness and sort of trying to work on that and also in accepting a lot of fear and creating uh, an environment of fear. So in that piece, I also imbibed a whole bunch of Pepto-Bismol and vomited uh, live three nights in a row, which can give you bismuth poisoning, uh, but that, that wasn't so bad. Um, um, it is a heavy metal, though, I found it. Um, but uh, so do your research when you do performances. So anyway, uh, this piece uh, as a kind of a sculptural work I uh, went to Europe a little bit, uh, uh, Barcelona, London, uh, and uh, uh, there's a series of two. One is living in Portland, and one is in my studio uh, in a crate. So I'll move, uh, oh, I get to move on. Uh, so um, working with public art, uh, I got a commission to make a billboard. Uh, I don't know if anybody may have seen this around uh, Paved Arts, which is local uh, artist-run center. I worked there at a time, and shout out to all the uh, artist-run culture. Um, so this piece uh, was called They're Pulling the Wolves Over Our Eyes. Um, and I was interested in uh, hiding and uh, informing. Uh, you'll see in the piece itself, is this thing? No. I, anyway, there's, uh, there's my eye. And then there's these four cubes uh, that are sort of um, like more noise information. And each of these is about a three by four foot tall um, uh, magic eye image. So you could go up to the, you, it, it was sort of around like if you could uh, create a structure for people to become informed uh, more and more according to their position and the idea that you had to know what you wanted to learn before you could get access to it and so there's a lot of uh, boundaries to learning. Uh, anyway, one of the images had a wolf, one had a sheep and then one said they're pulling the wolf, they're pulling the wool over our eyes and the other one said, uh, we are wolves in sheep's clothing. And I uh, sort of wanted people, so if you wanted to go see those magic eye images, you had to go into this building and you had to know already that they were there and you had to ask to go onto the balcony and then you were able to establish, uh, to, to get access to that information. Uh, and I sort of want to play on how difficult it can be to get information. Uh, and I think I was sort of like angry about uh, all the, Harper cuts to libraries. So at least we got <laughs> one out of there. Anyway, I'm pretty pleased about that. Um, uh, so moving on to an, another public art uh, piece. That, that last one was not a collaboration, but this one here uh, was. This is a monument um, in Saskatoon by the Riverbank Spadina and Avenue A uh, for the War of 1812. It's called the Spirit of Alliance. It's made with um, Adrian Stimson and uh, Ian Happy Grove. The three of us were commissioned in uh, 2011 and went into this high-paced production uh, period to produce it. Um, it's a bronze teepee in the center of a, a traffic circle. So uh, I, uh, like this was um, commissioned by White Cap Dakota First Nation. And of the uh, contestants, Adrian is an Aboriginal artist and also uh, been a, a war artist. He's gone to Afghanistan and produced work. Uh, portraiture of Aboriginal artists, and he's like a fantastic artist. Adrian Stimson, look him up and you will learn some great stuff. Um, great to work with, Isabel, pardon me. And uh, so we, we pitched uh, the circle because it is a central uh, part of uh, the Dakota and uh, many uh, Aboriginal uh, worldviews as our center uh, for the piece. And uh, when you enter the circle, you find the rails of a teepee, and it's a bronze teepee. It's fully cast in bronze. It's in, uh, got, uh, wow, and I'm going fast here, and I'm way behind. Uh, it's a bronze teepee, uh, and you'll see on the ground, there's a line between these two figures that are in treaty. 
Uh, and it turns out that this man, uh, Robert Dixon, who's uh, on this side of the line, which is the north end, uh, the line was supposed to represent the, uh, the medicine line or the, the, the border that was created after the uh, War of 1812 and the Treaty of Ghent. A lot of information you can find out about the piece there, and there's information uh, on that. Um, but the woman and child are uh, Itza Totowen and her daughter, Helen, Dixon, who were married to the representative of the crown. So they're in treaty with the crown. This man is married into the Dakota uh, group. His daughters were Dakota. And um, a chief Wabasha for who's of a dynasty of, of chiefs. Uh, he had one eye. They called him the leaf. I think maybe because it looked like a leaf. Uh, were in treaty. And this is when the Dakota were like the military power on the continent. So they were uh, fearsome and had a great territory. Uh, anyhow, this piece uh, was made fully collaboratively with the community and uh, between ourselves. And so uh, in taking on a project like that, uh, sorry, the, the design, it's like all hands on board, but also like everybody working on the same surfaces. And uh, so it was a really good challenge and you really have to work with people you really trust. Uh, and in terms of design, um, our intention of collaboration and alliance, uh, that was central. And I think with art making, that's a big important part of the work is that you have to um, set the intention, uh, but maybe not the result. Uh, so when we work together, we really uh, were kind of uh, pushing for the type of imagery we could get. And for me, the, the greatest achievement of the piece is the, uh, the teepee itself, uh, which you know is like a home. It's a unit, it's a home. And so the, the idea of the First Nation home on the, on the circle being divided, but you can't predate that home. So it's an important element for me. Um, okay, so moving on. I can't remember what I put here, but it's an, okay. So is it a video? What did I do? Great. Okay, so this is um, more collaborative work uh, with Adrian Stimson. Actually, this is uh, going into kind of more tech-centered uh, work. We're working with depth sensors, Connect, uh, Xbox Connect, and pulling images. This image, I believe, was taken nearby at the, at the rail, and those are all buffalo skulls, and they were taken here locally. Um, and so Adrian um, also has a performance persona called Buffalo Boy, and he's working on honoring each individual buffalo that was slaughtered, uh, you know, in this kind of buffalo apocalypse. And so we're uh, working on uh, parts of those. So you'll see uh, working on the eye and just different imagery that we're working with video, our depth of our bodies. And then we were uh, Jason Berg, who's an abstract painter, uh, uh, Métis uh, and, and Cree artist. He's in New Jersey right now, but we work together quite often. And the lines, um, that you're seeing moving around are our hands drawing abstract shapes, erasing uh, the image of the buffalo and then returning it to uh, an image of a uh, landscape. So there's some ideas around uh, discussing, you know, the planes and the lines that we delineate across, uh, you know, geographies and how, that, what that, how meaningful that is to us or, or not. Uh, and that's the hope. So again, um, this is a collaborative piece. I think I'll let this play out a bit. And we just have, um, actually, we have um, the heartbeat of uh, Marjorie Bocage, who's a fantastic uh, documentary filmmaker and, uh, and artist. She's Métis. She lives in Duck Lake. And she's an uh, ally and teacher. Uh, and uh, I used to have long hair, and that's my hair. OK. Uh, so, uh, working with depth sensors uh, and, and being a sculptor and working with ideas of depth and 3D space has become pretty central. And uh, I really enjoy teaching. My mom's a teacher and I've been teaching uh, workshops. Uh, so, I kind of wanted to show in some of these design elements that I'm working with. Um, uh, so, this is a workshop I presented in Winnipeg. Uh, Art City is a, a not for profit uh, artist. Uh, run space that hires about 20 artists in Winnipeg. It celebrated its 25th anniversary this year. Uh, Wanda Koop, who just won a Governor General's Award uh, and Canada Council grant uh, 
in the arts uh, began it. It's in an inner city neighborhood. And uh, so I went in and we made uh, living sculptures of ourselves and 3D scanned ourselves and generated a series of 3D sculptures uh, with the kids. And uh, so these are so actually that's Eddie Ayub in the middle. He's the, he's the director. And then some of the kids with pantyhose and balloons and cardboard and anything you can get your hands on. There's egg cartons making these kind of like science fiction abstract sculptures. I'm hoping uh, that in the coming months and this year we'll be taking this idea, because I do it a lot in schools. I think I've done about 10,000 living sculptures now with kids in the province, because uh, they only take a minute to make. And it's a great way to talk about, you know, uh, hiding yourself, protecting your image, uh, keep it, getting kids to know that they have the right to their image, because more and more uh, photos and, and things go out uh, without their, anyway, they, they need a kind of literacy uh, with that, I think, so. This is another one. We had to, we had to uh, 3D Photoshop out the the balloons that the kids had put at the front of his pants. <laughs> Don't tell everybody, but that was one. I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a little artistic call on that one. I'm just going to pull those balloons out. So uh, that's that's like a little uh, seven-year-old kid who made this huge dangling uh, uh, proboscis of some kind. Um, so yeah, that's some of those 3D sculptures with kids, and I'm having a lot of fun with those process. Um, this is another video. Let's, uh, let's see which one it is. I know I'm running uh, short here. Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, so um, that one doesn't want to play? Okay, well, this is okay, because I think I'm getting pretty long-winded here. Um, last summer in August, I traveled to Toronto working with uh, Tanya Tagak. Uh, Jason Berg, um, again, because we, we've been working together quite a lot over the last five years. Uh, Michael Red, who's a DJ from Vancouver, and, um, and Santi Smith, who's a, a Mohawk um, choreographer and dancer uh, with a troupe in Toronto. And for the Pan Am Games, uh, pa the Pan Am Path, which is their, um, they, they, they made this cultural pathway of uh, artistic programming and uh, permanent installs. We made their sort of uh, final hurrah piece, um, which is the video that doesn't play. Um, <laughs> but uh, we used the Kinect and, and sound actuated um, 3D elements to create a, a circle-based um, artwork, which was this sort of um, science fiction and spiritual journey. It sounds really different than how it, it came off, but um, it was a really interesting piece to work on in terms of design because Tanya Tagak only works improvisationally. So you cannot generate a piece and say, okay, now you're going to think about, now we're thinking about this, and then we're doing this part, and then we're doing this. She's like, her, her tech writer is like, she starts and she'll do her thing. So we had to design an entire 50-minute um, uh, video uh, that was interactive with her movements and with Santi's movements, and that could also generate, um, uh, you know, unexpected results. So, in effect, the piece itself t was improvisational in response. We used Quartz Composer and uh, and other uh, video rendering um, like technologies to sort of make sure. Uh, so we and we ended up with a 50-minute video that was only the way it was during the piece once and can't be reproduced, which I think is kind of nice. Um, these are some stills. So that was about a 40-foot uh, or 50-foot wide circle on the other side of the um, of one of the rivers, <laughs> which I can't remember the name of right now. Um, and it was this sort of um, work based on um, Cree cosmology, and so uh, the names of stars according to different Cree nation uh, legends, and, and going to the great chief star, uh, which has a different name in uh, um, you know European uh, cultures. I can't remember it right now. Uh, these are some stills, so uh, from different things that we did for. Oh no, this is the video. I think. Are we sure about that? Ha. <laughs> I changed the, see I made, I changed the format. Uh, sorry, I know I'm gonna go, I'm gonna hear a beep here. 
media not found. Well, that's where you would have seen that work. If you look up um, Summer Journeys or um, The Great Chief Star, uh, you can find it. Uh, so I'll move on. So uh, different pieces uh, generated uh, recently for the, uh, an exhibit at the Saskatchewan Crafts Council. Um, I felt like a true imposter working um, at the Crafts Council this time. I've trained as a, you know, a sculptor, but I was making works for a handcraft gallery that were made by robots that were 3D scanned from sculptures I'd made. It just felt a little imposterish. See? It de that's the imposter detector. Uh, so <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just going to finish up um, right now uh, for here until the, I guess, till the new year. Uh, I've been uh, very uh, lucky and uh, myself and a team of scientists have had uh, a Canada Council for the Arts grant approved uh, where we're going to be using um, micro CT imaging and we're crossing our fingers about getting access to synchrotron beam time to generate artwork. Uh, and this would be, a, I mean, I, I don't want to get too far ahead, but it would be a first in Canada if an artist had access to beam time to make art. There's only one artist in Australia who's, who, who's done it so far, so my fingers are crossed. But we're working right now um, with these uh, super tiny, you can see I bite my nails, uh, but that's a tiny little, I don't know why I said that, but this little five pixel dot is a, a zebrafish embryo. Uh, and then using that uh, micro CT scanning, we're, we're able to scale those, uh, those models up and, and create uh, structures that can be 3D printed and uh, projected into uh, video game structures. So the idea is to, to take zebrafish, which are used for transgenic research and uh, models of uh, bone development and uh, also just evolutionary development to um, create an immersive environment where when you move through a space, you are moving through a timeline of their development and going from their uh, you know, zygo single cell phase into these different phases uh, in three dimensional space. So the working model will be presented at the University Art Gallery, Snellgrove Art Gallery in uh, July, the last two weeks of July. Uh, and I'm working with Dr. Brian Eames and uh, David Cooper, uh, Dr. David Cooper, uh, with the cell, no, uh, biology and cell anatomy department at the University of Saskatchewan. And apparently our fish eggs kind of got messed up today. So I have to start over and we've, we're breeding fish. You have to play the right music. And then they kind of nature. So, uh, and so I brought some of the, this is not our, our footage because we're working at imaging uh, 3D. Um, but if we just hit play, this will give you an idea of the, the early stages. And what we want to do is create these uh, massive, because um, this, I mean, I don't know, everybody's pretty into healthy eating, I think, from the crowd. So it's like, you know, quinoa, right? Like these are about a quinoa bead, uh, you know, uh, amaranth. They're more like amaranth sized. Okay, I don't know if this is running. Is it? Is it running? No. Well, that's what they look like at first. Uh, okay, and then the final piece. Uh, this one is actually a kind of a shout out because I'm looking for collaborators, uh, uh, people who might work in uh, game uh, platforms like uh, Unity uh, or uh, you know other graphics platforms or 3JS. Anybody with knowledge in there. Uh, you know, come talk to me. I'm looking for some people, and we've got a project. This is um, Dick Arbitrage, who's a, a fake um, character uh, that a friend, uh, artist, and uh, artistic director of um, Paved Arts, David Larivier, is working with. He's made this entire feature-length fake documentary about uh, serial killers who kill uh, Fortune 500 CEOs. <laughs> and this is the, one of the biggest hedge fund managers who was badly murdered, apparently, but according to his will, his head was uh, to be frozen in a, uh, in a freezer. Uh, to so we're making an interactive model for this uh, art exhibit using a 3D scan. So I generated a 3D scan. We gave him uh, uh, Kurt Douglas's hair, no, Michael Douglas's hair, and um, we're looking to create a couple different animations with him. So this is the, the prototype, which won't play, uh, but it's a real-time uh, piece. So. I think that's it. And that really is Michael Douglas's hair.
Pace Your Wonder. Okay, thank you very much.